Oh, no, Pierce. Oh, I wasn't supposed to start the LaFleurish anyway. <coughs> We're all set, Cable. This chair's like sitting in a hole. I know, I have to get it up. Is that how it comes out? There are some chairs I've never seen those when you're sitting and all of a sudden they go right down and your chin is like where the keyboard is. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Wednesday, February 15th, 2017. At this time we uh, invite you all to join in with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're standing, I would like to ask for a moment of silence to recognize the passing of our former town clerk, town treasurer, town collector, Frank R. Rogers. Uh, I think most people in town uh, remember Frank Rogers, uh, not only for his, his public service, but also um, very active in the Dighton Lions Club, Korean War veteran. Frank was there uh, when they dedicated the Veterans Cemetery down at the community church. Uh, and he was just a, a fixture around Town Hall for many, many years. Thank you. I would like to announce that the calling hours for Frank will be Friday, February 17th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Crapo Hathaway Funeral Home on Somerset Avenue in Taunton, and there will be a memorial service at Crapo Hathaway Funeral Home on Saturday, February the 18th at 10 a.m. Thank you. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the following minutes be approved. Uh, minutes of the Board of Health special meeting on January the 12th. Minutes of a special meeting, uh, Board of Selectmen on February the 8th, 2017. I second that, Mr. Chairman. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that the following warrants be approved. 33A-17 in the amount of $83,694.30 payroll. Warrant 33B-17 in the amount of $82,753.14. Warrant 33C-17 in the amount of $2,268,000. $739.75, that's the DR assessment, and warrant 33D-17 in the amount of $188.95, the last three being accounts payable, all dated February 15th. I second that, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Correspondence. Tonight we have a piece of correspondence from Comcast regarding their services. This is just a little update sent to us by uh, Mr. Robert Sullivan that was with us so maybe a month, six weeks ago. Uh, and it's just a, for informational purposes only. And it reads, as part of our continuing effort to keep you informed, we wanted to share on April 1st, 2017, the following packages and services will no longer be available for any new subscriptions. Digital Preferred Plus One Premium, Digital Preferred with HBO, Digital Preferred Plus Two Premiums, Digital Preferred with HBO and One Premium, Digital Preferred Tier Plus Two Premiums, Digital Preferred Tier with HBO and One Premium. 
that all customers are receiving this information well in advance on their bill messages, on your bills as a message also. Okay. Additionally, customers who currently subscribe to one of these packages will continue to receive the package or service until they make a change to their service or receive further advance notice. And again, if you have any questions, please visit Xfinity.com or contact Mr. Sullivan at 508-884-2326. Announcements. Tonight's announcements, trash bags, shops, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office. Call 508-669-6431 for more information. Burning season is now through May 1st, 2017. Permits may be obtained at Dighton Fire Station, 300 Main Street, for $10. Uh, please make your checks payable to the town of Dighton. There is a winter parking ban in effect until April 1st. No parking is allowed on any street during this time. Landfill stickers are available at the transfer station during regular hours on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Payment by check only made payable to the town of Dighton for $15. Registration is required for the vehicle being permitted, and stickers are not transferable. Senator Mark Pacheco will not be holding office hours at Town Hall for the next few months. If you do need assistance, please call his office in Taunton at 508-822-3000. And the town clerk asks that you please complete, complete your town census and return them as soon as possible. <coughs> Nomination papers for the annual town election are available at the clerk's office until tomorrow, February 16, 2017. And the deadline to return your nomination papers is Tuesday, February 21st by 5 p.m. So any of you that may want to take out papers, nomination papers at the last moment, you have all day tomorrow to take them out. And for everyone, whether they've taken them out or intend to, you must turn them in with the required amount of signatures by February 21st at 5 p.m. The Dighton Food Bank distribution will be held in a low level of Town Hall this Saturday, February 18th from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. We would like to announce there are vacancies available on the Historical Commission, the Cable Commission, the Open Space Committee, and the Cemetery Commission. If anyone is interested in stepping forward and, and being a part of some of these commissions or committees, please uh, pick up a volunteer form at the uh, Selectman's Office. Funeral services will be held for David Phillips at the Community Church at 11 a.m. on Saturday, April 15th, with a graveside service to follow. Next on the agenda, old business. Review, discuss, and act on a return to a five-day work week. We collected a lot of materials through the end of January and I'm not going to read all of them because some of them are just photocopies and just say the same thing. Um, there were some comments that uh, I will address briefly here. Um, we had a lot of this pile in front of me. A lot of it is just photocopied stuff, but this is these were people who expressed uh, uh, either concern about not opening or it's clear that there was misinformation given to these people. And I will address some of those issues um, when I go through this summary. Um, what I have here, and I will ask uh, Mr. Zagrafis to uh, give us information when I when I get through this pile here. Um, 
Going back to the original agreement uh, that was negotiated between the clerical union employees and the town of Dighton. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and I will just read this in, in brief. Um, the undersigned parties based on economic, operational, and staffing concerns are agreeing on a trial basis. And I'll emphasize trial basis because there's reference to it in one of the pieces of feedback we got. On a trial basis to a four-day work week for ta town hall employees. Employee schedule. The regular starting time for all town hall employees will be either 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. Employees may, with notice and supervisory approval, adjust their starting time to either 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. as long as the services to be provided are and will be fully covered as determined by the supervisor. And by supervisor, we mean department head. It is agreed to between the parties that a four-day work week is a benefit for staff and the town. However, to make it work, the prime mutually agreed to concern of the parties must be to do what is required to properly provide the services needed to the citizens of the town. Open to the public hours for town hall. Town hall regular open and available to citizen hours for the four days of Monday through Thursday without overtime compensation will be 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., eight and a half hours per day, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., nine and a half hours on Wednesday. It is the intent of the parties that this agreed upon four day work week schedule shall not result in overtime requirements beyond those required by the Fair Labor Standards Act. Holidays. If a holiday falls on a day off for either full or part-time staff, the day immediately preceding the holiday will, subject to operational and staffing needs, normally be the day that the holiday will be granted. Supervisors will notify staff of any exceptions based on operational or staffing needs. Other operational or potential cost issues. It is agreed to between the parties that this change to a four-day work week is intended as a positive in time off for staff and as a positive in cost reduction for the town. Accordingly, any additional or, quote, other, unquote, unaddressed operational issues that may arise will be resolved by the parties with the full intent and goal of a, quote, no cost or beneficial cost change for the town, unquote, and a, quote, time and workday benefit for the employees, unquote. If either party is of the opinion that the four-day work week, as agreed to herein, is not working properly or is not meeting the needs of the citizens of, Dy of the town of Dighton, a 10-day notice of termination and intent to return to the previous five-day week's week and schedule will be provided, and this agreed to a four day schedule will be ended and the previous five day week and schedule will be reinstated. So that was the uh, memorandum of understanding that uh, led to the four day work week. Um, the concerns that have been issued, uh, mentioned here by some of the uh, feedback that we got um, in the negative, uh, or I should say not the negative, in the feedback that said don't change the work schedule at Town Hall, people were concerned that um, we were going to go to a 9 to 5 schedule. We've never had a 9 to 5 schedule in this building, <clears throat> regardless of whether it was a um, 4 or a 5 day week. People said, don't change the hours because we don't want to lose the Wednesday evenings. That was not part of the discussion. As I just read, the Wednesday evening hours were still here. 
those were, those were not part of making any changes if we went to a five-day work week. Um, somebody said Friday mornings don't help. So there was no other feedback. So I don't know what would help. I, I'm not sure what that um, feedback meant if Friday mornings don't help. I don't know if that meant don't change the four day or if it meant they want to be open all day Friday, which that hasn't happened in many years. Um, lower taxes, focus on schools, more teacher aides in schools, uh, focus on police station. Well, um, I think there was some misinformation there too because uh, number one, our taxes did go down slightly for most people this year. Focus on schools, more teacher aides in the schools. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have those concerns, you need to talk to the superintendent of schools, your elected school committee, your building principals. This board does not operate the school department. That's a separate elected board, and if you have concerns about staffing and teacher aides, you should address them with that uh, committee or the superintendent. As far as the police station goes, we know that it went to the uh, override uh, and uh, the debt exclusion override vote and it passed by 42 votes. So uh, the town is focused on the police station and the people involved with everything from the bond issue to the plans and everything else are working on this. Um, early hours are good. Don't make a sudden change in hours. No. We're not planning any sudden change. I outlined what that memorandum said. Uh, oh, the, the, um, the early morning hours are good so that they can drop their children off at school. I'm not sure how that affects town hall uh, as far as dropping children off at school. Um, there was no request for negative feedback. Again, I assume neg negative feedback is meant that this uh, pile of uh, paper here um, that said don't change the hours or all the photocopies that just say the same thing about leaving the hours the same. The reason that I asked over a month ago for people to let us know how they felt is because of the number of complaints that we got from citizens who wanted the town hall open more hours. Now, yes, since that memorandum went into effect, which was when I was on the board years ago, somewhere between 2007 and 2010, we have not gotten a lot of complaints about keeping town hall uh, open longer hours on Fridays. That was the only reason, simply because the fact that people didn't complain was in effect support of leaving it the way it was up until we got the complaints. So it's not like we didn't want to hear from people that wanted it open or closed on, on, uh, closed on Fridays. It was because one of the conditions that came up during the negotiations, which has been spelled in our letter to both the union and to the uh, uh, gentleman who represents the union, and, and they're aware of this. This is not a surprise. The four-day work week would remain in force and effect unless and until there were a sufficient number of people who wanted it changed. Up until this past November, December, literally only one person ever spoke up. And I haven't heard from that person this time. But so that was the reason why we didn't need a lot of input simply because we weren't having complaints. It's because people said they wanted more hours and it was, it was because of the way holidays fell this year. Um, so it's not an issue of fairness. I mean, it's an issue of exactly dealing with what was discussed back when this uh, memorandum was uh, being prepared. Um, another one said, don't change the Friday hours. We don't have Friday hours right now. No extension of hours. We're not talking an extension of hours. We're not talking additional costs. We're talking about the actual return to the schedule that was in place before 
people. Uh, before we negotiated the memorandum of agreement. So I'll just put that with this group. Um, this is just short and sweet. Tap the town working five days a week. Uh, dear town selectmen, I'm writing to express my concern about the hours of town hall. I agree that town hall should be open five days a week. It is much more convenient for the taxpayers and residents. Uh, this is a short one. Town hall should be open five days per week. Our town hall is a place for business. Therefore, it should be open five days a week. Thank you for letting us express our opinion. Dear Board of Selectmen, it's about time you put the residents in this town first. The town employees have been taking advantage of a four-day work week for years. Seems like every time I go to town hall, it's closed for one reason or another. When it is open, it seems like an unfriendly environment. Maybe a change in hours will promote a change of attitude, in the employees. There's a receiving stamp on this, so I had trouble reading part of that. Thank you for considering reopening Town Hall again on Fridays. As a taxpayer in this fast-growing town, I see it as a public service that our offices are open and available five days a week. The needs of the public should come first. Everyone at Town Hall is well-liked. Thank you for taking this under advisement. I hope to see our Town Hall open on Fridays again soon. Um, not all of these are anonymous folks, but I'm not going to read names. Uh, but um, I do have emails and I do have signed documents here. Um, it would be good to have Friday coverage, partly because other government offices, including state and federal, are open. And sometimes there needs to be a linking of objectives. Some towns open for part of the day on Friday. I believe that Rehoboth is open on Fridays, but only until noon. Or perhaps a rotating schedule of employees so that they would not have to work every Friday would be a consideration. To whom it may concern, I find it very inconvenient having the town hall open only four days. If you need something done on a Friday, you have to wait till the following Monday. Very inconvenient. Would be very helpful if the town was open that extra day. Um, after newly moving into this town, I could not understand why this town hall is not open serving the people five days a week. I'm sure if the employees currently employed by the town do not want to work the entire week, there are dozens of people that will be looking for work to provide for their families and would be more than happy to serve the people. Uh, this one is signed. Um, I am writing to express my support in making the town hall in Dighton a full-time office. It would be great if the town actually had a town hall that was open five days a week to accommodate folks that may need to obtain permits or other paperwork during business days. Being open four days is a joke. Even a four and a even a four and a half hour workday is a joke. The town hall should be open five full days. The town hall should be open five days a week, normal business hours. If the work week is 40 hours, then it should be open eight hours a day. If it is 35 hours, then it should be open seven hours a day. If the staff has an issue working five days a week, then perhaps they be, they be replaced with people that are willing to work. I hope you consider the feedback that you get and take action, which would be in the best interest of the town and not the employees that are paid from the residents. Um, next week will be another three-day week. 
This was coming up on, I believe, the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Next week will be another three-day week for town hall. Seems it's closed more than it's open, but the taxpayers have no say in town politics. Maybe we should let the employees do their jobs from home and have the taxpayers do everything by mail. We are not welcome at town hall anyway. Why do I say this? Well, you cannot get anyone to help you. First thing said is, it's not my job to assist you. I will take strong exception to some of those comments. <clears throat> I have a group of them here that say, leave the hours at the Dighton Town Hall as is. These hours work just fine, thank you, your local residents. Um, there should be no change to the hours. Residents are used to the current hours. Focus your time on improving other things like taxes, schools, and the upcoming police station. I already addressed that. Um, this is another one. It, it, it's, it's exactly the same as this one, only smaller print. Um, I received an interesting um, email. And this started out similarly to the other ones about what we should focus on, schools, taxes, and the new police station. Um, so I responded to this. Uh, these, this was identified uh, on Mr. and Mrs. And my response was, thank you for your feedback. I will print it and add it to the folder. To address your message, the tax rates went down in FY17. Taxes are controlled by those residents who attend the town meetings and not the selectmen. Budget requests are sent to the selectmen who review them and then they go to the finance committee for recommendations. When the budget is presented at the annual town meeting, voters vote to set salaries of elected officials and vote on individual department budgets. Voters also vote on special articles, some of which are requests for funding. All of the meetings are open to the public and posted well in advance. As far as town hall being open on Fridays, the hours were agreed to by and between the town of Dighton and the clerical union. Both parties agreed on the terms and conditions regarding hours of operation for town hall, including going back to the five day week. This matter has been brought to the board's attention because a significant number of people have contacted the board and indicated that they want town hall open. The town has and continues to grow rapidly and we cannot ignore these residents. There was a little opposition to the four day work week in the first few years and then it died down. Now residents have told the selectmen they want to change. To quote from the memorandum of agreement that created the four day work week, quote, if either party, meaning the town or the union, if either party is of the opinion that the four day work week as agreed to herein is not working properly or is not meeting the needs of the citizens of the town of Dighton, a 10 day notice of termination and intent to return to the five to the previous five day week and schedule will be provided and this agreed to a four day schedule will be ended and the previous five day week and schedule will be reinstated unquote. We are still collecting feedback through the end of January, at which time we will review what has come in and determine what action should be taken. Uh, the couple responded and said, thank you for the informational letter. We appreciate the feedback. <coughs> feedback, excuse me. Um, I have one that says, I am a longtime resident of Dighton and I have no objective on town hall closing on Fridays. I don't know if they mean no objection or I'm not sure, but um, as I say, the ones that were separate from the, the ones I put together here, um, I kept them separate for that reason. When I talked about, um, when I read that memorandum about the um, trial basis, um, this one says, Dear Sir or Madam, I am an employee of the town of Dighton under the clerical union. 
I am writing in regards to the town hall closing on Fridays. I am in one of the town departments that is opened Monday through Friday. I clearly remember the shop steward, and I'm not going to mention her name, at the end of a union meeting quite a few years ago asking all departments if they had a problem with the town hall closing on Fridays to save electricity during the summer months. It was supposed to be temporarily for that summer. I'll just comment. No, that was not true. I read what, I read what that memorandum said. It does not say temporary for the summer. It was contingent on feedback from the public, the people we serve. Getting back to this letter. It was even mentioned that it was Mrs. Goulart's selectman at the time, idea to save money on electricity. I do not know if that is true or not, but I do distinctively remember it being said and being asked if the other departments, other than the town hall, had a problem with it, and all said no. But year after year has gone, and the town hall is still closed on Fridays. Now, for the time being, I assume all other departments are okay with this arrangement. But this could potentially become a problem when other town departments' employees, or even just one employee from another department, chooses to have Fridays off, and it is not beneficial to that employee's department. And it being a union position, that employee has every right to fight for that. On the end of the town residence, I do often hear them say that they would prefer to have a town hall being open for business on Friday. Thank you. Hope all works out for the best. Well, first of all, other employees in other unions, I, I should say all employees of the town of Dighton that are covered by a union contract do not have the option of just deciding I'm not working Fridays or I'm not working Wednesdays. The contracts contain information like working conditions, hours of operation. And as we know, uh, with the five unions in the town, um, different unions have different hours. Our fire department has a 48-hour shift. Uh, our police department has three shifts around the clock. Our communication center has three around the clock. These are all public safety departments that must be operational 24-7. Uh, As we know, our highway department, uh, for the most part, most of the year has regular daytime hours. However, as all of us know, um, this time of the year, they could be out there from morning to night and whatever. So the, this letter that said it was from an employee of the town, the point that is made about other employees and other unions or other departments doing this, it, it doesn't happen. And this is not relevant to the work schedule for the people covered who are in this building that were covered under that memorandum of understanding. As far as savings electricity, yes, I remember that. I remember that being discussed. And whether or not there was any follow-up on it, I wasn't here, so I can't tell you. It just seems that if a building is closed in the summer, there should be some savings on electricity. But I can't tell you that absolutely happened or tell you how much money we saved or kilowatt hours or any of that stuff. So, um, so this is what has come in uh, during the period when we asked for our feedback. And I'll ask Mr. Zubrat to talk about the, uh, his work on this uh, now. So the extent of my work on this matter uh, was basically just a Facebook poll. Um, and all I said was, um, as a resident of Dighton, do you want town hall open four days or five days? So it was just a question of convenience for people, whatever they preferred. Um, what I reported and what I recorded was 136 total votes cast. Um, this is separate from the papers that we have been collecting, uh, that Selectman Goulart uh, was reviewing. The five-day work week garnered 91 votes. The four-day work week garnered 45. So that is almost two to one, actually more than two to one uh, for a five-day work week. It's a landslide okay. from the Facebook polls. Um, 
as I said, some of these have names, uh, some of them don't. Anonymous is fine. Uh, the Facebook, though, those people can actually be identified if you wanted to do it. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, they, they know it's public. They didn't, okay. they didn't mind. Okay. So that's where we are right now. Uh, based on the, uh, the information we have, there is no question we have received significant uh, feedback from residents that want town hall opened on Fridays. And I'd like to make just one comment on that. Um, I'm not questioning the legitimacy of this pile to my left over here, um, a majority of which is for a four-day work week, maintaining the town hall hours the same. Uh, personally speaking, I liked that on Facebook, you knew how many times people voted, you knew whether they were a resident of Dighton because it was public. So um, it, I think it's a little bit more difficult to discern, especially since a lot of these don't have names. Um, who wrote, for example, what's stopping someone from printing that thing 75 times and sending it in anonymously? Well, we, I'm not saying that happened. But we do have some that are it's clearly. Um, At least with a poll, all I'm saying is it's verifiable. Are they a Dighton resident? How many times have they voted? So. I think, there, again, when I referred to that email that I got, that I responded to from the, the couple, it's clear to me in reading some of these that they all say the same thing. The police station, the school department, and, you know, uh, selectmen should spend their time looking at things other than that. Um, my guess is this was part of a response to emails to get this information out. And because of the amount that went out that was incorrect, I can't imagine anybody, well, maybe I can't imagine it, anyone who has children in the schools telling the Board of Selectmen do something about the schools. Um, if we had a local school department that was a department of the town, that's one issue. We don't have, per se, a local school department. We have a regional school district with a superintendent and a regional school committee. Um, you know, that's not, that's not within our purview. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, quite frankly, for anyone concerned about the school department that told us we need to do something about our schools, whether it's add more teacher aides or whatever, if we had children in school right now as selectmen, we couldn't do anything about it anyhow. We would be like every other parent that would have to go to the school committee, the superintendent, the principal, and discuss it there. So uh, I, I just want to make that clear. We don't have any special powers about the operation of schools. But, but, and there were a lot of letters that mentioned the fact that we should focus on the school. So I just want to say to whoever wrote that, I don't, I'm not, I'm only going to speak for myself. I can actually focus on more than one thing at a time. So. I can multitask, so I don't need to just be focused on one thing. The other point I'd like to make uh, is simply that uh, there seems to be a lot of interest in the schools from these letters. The, there are two spots open up on the school committee for this election. If you're that worried about it, I suggest you run and get involved. And do it quickly because the... Yeah, you only have till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Right? <laughs> to pull the papers. Um, I think the other thing too is if the repeated reference focus to schools is talking about facilities, if you have concerns about the school buildings in Dighton, and I'm just going to limit this to the elementary and middle school, uh, there is a capital committee working at the uh, school committee level and they look at all sorts of expenditures. Uh, not only at the, they obviously look at the regional high school and school facilities, but there are some members on that DR capital committee who are also members of the town of Dighton capital planning committee. If in fact it comes down sometime in the future that additional facilities are needed, it would come from the school department via the school committee superintendent to each of the towns. If it's a facility in Dighton, we would all know about it. Um, there would be presentations. 
If it's uh, something that would require a bond issue, there would be public meetings explaining all of that. There would be a town meeting uh, in Dighton at which the people of Dighton would be asked to act on whatever the proposal is. Uh, we as selectmen would discuss it with the school committee or the building committee or the study committee, whatever the committee is, the capital planning committee, along with the finance committee. And the finance committee would make recommendations if there were uh, suggestions that would end up with warrant articles to spend money. But again, if it's facilities, it is not the board of selectmen that would be going to the school department telling them they need to do something at one of our facilities. This is just how it is with municipal government. So um, we're not shirking our duties or anything else, but I, I think people have to understand what <coughs> the Board of Selectmen is responsible for, what the school department is responsible mm -hmm. for, meaning the school committee and the superintendent. So that's just some clarification there. And if you really have concerns, I encourage you to contact your school committee members. Uh, uh, the resident, the ones from Dighton, and uh, they will take it to the full committee. And I'd also like to point out that you very graciously volunteered to be on the Finance Advisory Committee with some school members. So we, That's right. we have our, our, our tentacles <laughs> right. in different directions. But we, as, as Mr. Zagrafa says, we do have representation on a Financial Advisory Committee to the school committee. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on it, and so is Kevin Perry, who is a member of the Finance Committee. So is Robert Rendon, who is both a member of, member of the Dighton Finance Committee and the Dighton Capital Planning mm -hmm. Committee. So uh, Dighton is represented, uh, other than the school committee, elected officials, Dighton is represented in an advisory capacity at the schools as it relates to financial matters. And if you have concerns about school budgets or things like that, uh, contact me or Mr. Perry or Mr. Rendon, and we can certainly take your concerns to that board. And my last clarification, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is simply that this board actually routinely attends the police station building committee meetings, so we are actually uh, very um, involved in terms of knowing what's going on, attending the meetings, um, and, you know, being in touch with the members of the committee. So um, I, I, I doubt that the, the individuals who reference the police station in these letters also attend, because usually we're the only ones there. So that's all I wanted to say. Mr. Chairman, do you feel left out? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, for those that took the time and effort to uh, either cast your decision or your, your feelings made known on Facebook or took the time to write on various pieces of paper and stationery and little cards and somebody had a sale on the same envelopes that majority of them used. Um, um, we thank you for your time and effort. Uh, this will be all taken into consideration the uh, collective bargaining agreement for the clerical union will expire June 30th of 2017. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks we can start setting dates to um, negotiate the new contract for this clerical union. And uh, without a doubt, this will be probably the, the major topic of the next three year contract. So. Uh, all I can say is thank you again for your feedback, whether it was positive, negative, mm -hmm. uh, impartial, uh, and we'll see what happens after the collective bargaining negotiation. Mm -hmm. and, and I just wanted to add, um, you know, there was a lot of reference to, um, at least for some of the individuals who wanted it open five days, saying that the town hall employees don't work, aren't helpful. Personally speaking, I do not ascribe to that belief. I see how hard they work. And again, I think that's a misconception. Nobody was asking them to work more hours, i.e. work work harder, in, in their words. Uh, we were just uh, looking into whether people wanted it open um, that, that fifth day for four and a half days. I think the recommendation, uh, the suggestion, I'll call it, um, that one resident sent in
Perhaps a rotating schedule of employees so that they would not have to work every Friday would be a consideration. Um, I think that's worth considering going down the road. Um, that's nothing more than a scheduling thing. Yeah. And I think the other thing that uh, residents have to be aware of, not only is there a memorandum of agreement, there is a collective bargaining agreement. And that collective bargaining agreement is still in full force and effect. That's what the chairman mentioned is coming up for collective bargaining. Um, so there are two agreements right now. The one I read, the memorandum of agreement, is conditional. Okay? We're going to take all this material under advisement. Um, we will be, I would assume, opening pretty soon collective bargaining with the clerical union. Um, and we should be able to get all of this resolved. The, um, and Mr. Chairman, correct me if I'm wrong. The collective bargaining agreement is clear as far as any change in work hours. Reverting back to a five-day work week, which is really a four-and-a-half-day work week, would not violate that collective bargaining agreement. All right? So when this was entered into, it somewhat modified the existing agreement. But to go back to a four and a half day work week being open on Fridays does not violate the collective bargaining agreement as it's currently written. And I think the suggestion about um, coming up with a rotating schedule uh, is certainly something worth considering because number one, it wouldn't violate the collective bargaining agreement, and number two, it could be scheduled by department heads in this building. And number three, it would not be unfair to the other town employees who work in other locations that are covered by that collective bargaining agreement, because I think there is also concern about mm -hmm. that. So I think all three issues can be addressed. So, um, Town hall could be open a half a day when services would be available. Um, employees could have a rotating schedule so they wouldn't have to work every Friday, but, but the coverage could be provided. And other people covered under the collective bargaining agreement who are not located in this building, all will be located in the, the old town hall when those offices are finished, who work different hours will not have, I'll call it basis, for an unfair, I don't want to say practice, unfair advantage uh, over them. So anyhow, that's where we are with this whole thing. I just wanted to say one thing about rotation. I, I've also heard that suggestion as well. Um, and, and think it could be a good idea if that's the way the direction the town goes in. My one concern uh, regarding that is simply what about the employees who don't have someone to rotate with? Um, what are they, they would have to work every Friday. There would have to be, yeah, there would have to be some kind of coverage. So I guess what I'm saying is for, for an individual, I, I don't mean to use your example, but Karen wouldn't really have someone to rotate with. It wouldn't affect her. Excuse okay. me. What I mean by that, she's already working. We've already increased her hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, she could just stretch. I understand what you're saying. Where, where Karen is, is, is not per se under a department head, she has to work the hours she has to work. Mm -hmm. She manages her her 40 hours, because we increased her, mm -hmm. um, to get the work done she has to do. Um, so her work flexibility will really depend on her own management of her own time schedule. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I was at the regional high school, we used to have summer hours uh, after school let out and before it opened. and. Um, it, we never had a problem. Every department had to be covered, uh, which meant um, business, special ed, payroll, accounts payable. All of the operations had to take place and have coverage. And we used a rotating schedule. And, um, and it was done, if you looked at a calendar, 
we had a calendar posted. And if you saw our initials in there, any day of the week, you know exactly who was going to be present. That included the administration, the superintendent, the business manager, the director of special needs. You could look at that and know exactly who was going to be in the office, and by the initials, you knew every department was covered. And we never had a problem. It worked. Mm -hmm. So it may also be that a department with one person might be able to team up with somebody. Because uh, I think, for example, um, across the hall, uh, now that, de that department's going to move both mm -hmm. of those departments. But if that were not the case, somebody working in that department in a support capacity who wanted to take a Friday off could make an arrangement with Karen to kind of keep an eye on things mm -hmm. on that Friday. Mm -hmm. By the same token, if Karen says, you know, I want to take Friday off next week, that person were on, they could kind of, you know, keep an eye on things. So there is, there is a way to cooperate to get it done to the benefit of everybody. Mm -hmm. So j just to clarify, two people are in a department, they're going to rotate. They're just going to work two Fridays out of the month, correct? If that's what they agree to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they work it out amongst themselves. Yes. And as yeah. far as uh, beginning hours and ending hours, uh, if a person comes in at 7 and they're working a, uh, 35 hours a week, they can figure out if they're going to have Friday off uh, what their hours will be during the four days that they're here. The person who is with them, if you will, um, would look at their 35 hours and say, okay, included in my 35 hours this week, uh, I've got a cover on Friday because my counterpart is taking Friday off. And so they could work it all out. But there'd be no additional expense to the town. There would be no overtime to the town. The building would be open four and a half days a week. The services would be provided. Um, it's just, it's like taking the things that are in that agreement, putting them back the way they were, but still not affecting costs, not affecting um, services to the community. You can still open early. If somebody wants to be here later on, they can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you will, the no cost procedure that put this in place you can reverse it back to the other way, and it's still a no-cost thing. And I, I, I will say I do suspect some of the people who, <laughs> just anecdotal and based on being contacted by certain individuals, I think pe some people that did vote for the four-day thought it might incur some new charges because they were under the impression they'd be working more hours. Mm -hmm. um, so there's mm -hmm. that. Too. And you can't, under the collective bargaining agreement, you cannot do that without... Uh, there are limitations mm -hmm. on what you can do. <clears throat> within, it's within an hour of starting and ending time, I believe mm -hmm. it is. So um, there'd be no violation of the agreement. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there was, I'm sure there was misinformation because of some of the comments. Uh, moving along, next on the agenda, new business, review, discuss, and act on the resignation of Heidi Swiss from the Parks and Recreation Commission and the Planning Board. We have a piece of correspondence, uh, and I'll read it as is, to whom it may concern. On February 5th, 2017, I moved out of the town of Dighton. Therefore, I have to resign from my elected positions on the Planning Board and the Park and Recreation Commission. Thank you, Heidi Swist. And to follow up, this is a memorandum from the Board of Selectmen to Heidi Swist. By this memorandum, the Board of Selectmen at their regular meeting on February 15, 2017, voted to accept your resignation from the Planning Board and the Parks and Recreation Committee. Thank you for your service to the town. Would someone like to make a motion for that effect? So um, moved. Go ahead. So moved. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? 
I just like to say, uh, as I understand, Ms. Swiss will be uh, will remain, you know, involved in the town um, as office manager of the planning board. Um, she's has a lot of expertise. I know I've learned a couple things from you if you're watching, uh, Heidi. Um, so, with with uh, thanks and regret, uh, I vote to <laughs> accept her resignation. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did we have minutes to sign? We did. Did we sign? It happened quick. <laughs> I think we did. Oh, did we sign them in the office? I signed them. I don't think we did. I don't think they went around. Thank you. I apologize, Karen. Oh, Nancy. See that? I even <laughs> read it. Oh, they mock draft. This That's why. Sorry. This, one. this is them. Yeah. Sorry, Nancy. This is the other one. Okay, so that's just the draft. Yep. It's quick. Next under new business, review, discuss, and act on a recommendation from the police chief to appoint a part-time dispatcher. We have a, a memo from address to the Board of Selectmen from Chief Robert L. McDonald, recommendation of part-time dispatcher. On January 31st, 2017, I interviewed Justin Jackson for a part-time dispatcher. I found him to be a good fit for the position. It is my recommendation that the Board of Selectmen review the attached application and consider appointing Justin Jackson as a part-time dispatcher. Mr. Jackson has all the qualifications and certifications already necessary to start our in-house training. Oh, good. Anyone like I'll to make, make a motion? motion to appoint Justin Jackson. Justin Jackson to part time dispatcher position. I second that motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I just want to say this is fantastic. It is. It really is. I'm really I'm not being facetious. I'm really I'm really happy to see that there's interest out there still for, oh, for dispatch. Yeah. And we need coverage. Absolutely. Yes. Um, he must, Mr. Jackson must have followed that debt exclusion vote. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> the ayes have it. That carries unanimously. Thank you. Making sure we didn't miss anything. <laughs> Next under new business, review, discuss, and act on a snow day that has been earned by the Highway Department employees on February 9th, 2017. It's addressed to whom it may concern from Mr. Thomas Ferry, Superintendent of Streets. Please be advised on 2917, the following employees worked more than 16 consecutive hours and should be entitled to an additional day off per the current contract of which uh, the uh, the union and the Board of Selectmen have signed this year for another three years. The people, the employees involved, Joe Sameo, Nicholas Reynolds, Michael Berebe, Nicholas Sisson, Ray Rose, William Mendoza, Dennis Hazel, Jeffrey Gagnon, and Thomas Ferry. I'll entertain a motion to um, honor the contractual commitment of over working over 16 straight hours and they do get a day off. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Job well done. Excellent job. 
If there's none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And last under new business, review, discuss, and act to appoint Chris Chandonet to the Cemetery Commission. Thank you. I have to allow Selectman Gulak because uh, we had someone that had left the Cemetery Commission and Mrs. Gulak got the hook out and the first <laughs> person that went by came in the office was Chris Chandonet. You enter at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Ferry also said uh, that if there is anyone else out there that would like to be on the cemetery commission, it's a three-member board right now, um, but if anybody else would like to uh, sort of sit in, it's only until the end of, uh, well, it's in June when we make our appointments, so uh, this committee, by the way, only had four excuse me, three meetings in 2016. Um, so it's not, you're not out every, every week, every month. Uh, and it is an important committee. Um, and I might add, how many did they have, three? Mm -hmm. We had more than that today. <laughs> I make a motion that we appoint Chris Chandonet to the Cemetery Commission. I second that, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I think he'll be great on the committee. He's, he's knowledgeable, he loves the town, and I'm excited to see new people. Me too. He'll do, he'll do a very good job. Absolutely. Very good job. I'm glad he volunteered, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him come back in the office since. <laughs> no, my thought was if nobody came forward, I would volunteer to do it through June. But I am happy that Chris stepped up. I don't need another title. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> well, this will allow us to, to refocus away from, from the working hours at Town Hall, so. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next on the agenda, reports. Do my colleagues have any reports? Oh, that makes me think, not a report, but when we were accepting the resignations, uh, the two resignations that Heidi submitted, um, we should announce what the, what the situation is with the planning board and Parks and Rec relative to those vacancies. Yes. Because they're both elected you. positions, right? Yes. yes. Correct. Well, she was... Her uh, term was up for Park and Rec, mm -hmm. so that's already been advertised. Um, if you're interested in running for the planning board, all you have to do is take your papers out by tomorrow at 4.30 and then return them by the 21st of February. So, does the, Mr. Chairman, does that mean two planning board seats are going to be on the ballot in April? There would be, because she had a year left to go, didn't she? Yes, oh, I believe it was 2018. There is one on there already. Ms. It's too late to yes. put it on the ballot. Oh, yes. That's so if I'm you're interested, say. I would suggest that you um, stop by the selectman's office or contact somebody on the on the planning board mm -hmm. and make your interest known, mm -hmm. because that one year. Um, position or uh, one year left in that term of Heidi Swiss leaving will probably have to be appointed okay. for that year. And this, so, yeah, so excuse me, Mr. Chairman. So if you're interested, stop by uh, see the selectman or one of the planning board members and uh, we'll, we'll take, take your interest and, and, and talk to you a little about it. But, but there still is another one. write-in though. For planning board? Can you do? You can do a writing I, for one year, I think. You might be able to. I Although know, I you know said the well, there's only that one vacancy there's shown. There's one vacancy that's shown problem. that's going to be okay. on the ballot at the election. Is going to be one one um, seat on the planning board, mm -hmm. which is for three years. It's a normal full year term. Heidi, by moving out of town, now cannot be an elected official. 
She has a year left on her term. It is too late for her to be put on the paperwork, I should say, not the ballot, the paperwork as an open seat. This will have to be appointed. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're interested, see one of the planning board members mm -hmm. or uh, the board of selectmen and, and make your interest known and, and we'll be in touch with you. Yeah, and this, just to clarify, says obviously the board of selectmen is the appointing authority, right. so ultimately the board of selectmen will be making that appointment. However, planning will uh, apparently be making a recommendation to the board of selectmen before that appointment uh, is made. Correct. And I believe, just to clarify, planning board is five years, correct? Yes, you're right. Yes. yes you're right. So it's a five. It's a five-year yeah. term. Uh, if you're appointed, you would serve the one year, and then if you so choose, you would run in 2018 for five more years. And as long as we're making things difficult, uh, there's <laughs> one more. There's one more that I was advised of about two hours or three hours ago. On the ballot is a an opening for a five-year seat on the housing authority. Mm -hmm. That was going to be eliminated however, by the state because they wanted to have another procedure. However, as of today, that vacancy will be on the ballot, which now means anyone who wants to run for that seat must take out their papers tomorrow by 4.30 and have them returned with the required amount of signatures by February 21st. So that is still going to be on the ballot and it will be open to anyone that wants to run for it. But I'm sorry, but you have one day to come and get the, Good the luck. papers. The, so there will be on the ballot one term for three years for the parks and rec, but there won't be a name unless somebody... Unless somebody took out papers, right? Heidi's name won't be on there, will it? No, her term was up. So oh, okay. that was a that was a uh, seat that had to be filled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she wouldn't have taken paper. You know. All right. So on Parks and Rec, if no one gets papers back in time, it would, could be a write-in. Is that correct? Uh, any time could be a write-in. Yes. Okay. Yep. But there, anybody that's out there, they've had this whole time to take the papers out for Park and Rec. <laughs> yeah, yes. I understand that, but I'm just wondering if there are people thinking, oh, Heidi's got the job, she'll probably run again, and then they didn't do it. Right, that's true. Yeah, right. okay. I, yeah, that is true. So I think we've got that straight. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure, but we covered it. <laughs> Every, regardless of if you are interested in running and you have not taken out papers, you must take them out by tomorrow at 4.30, the very last day. Moving along to acknowledgments. We have no acknowledgments. Oh, maybe it was because of the snow day. <laughs> uh, um, public input, our, our audience left. Our public's gone. Uh, I thought we were gonna have some public input. Me too. I was um, looking forward to it. Me too. I don't have any reports or anything, but I just wanna say, and I think uh, the board might like to say too, um, I want to thank Tom Ferry, all of the Highway Department employees, uh, Dennis Hazel. Uh, if you've seen television within the last week. Or today. <laughs> uh, I should say continuing, because Channel 4 was tonight at the 6 o'clock news. There's been a series of articles about uh, Dighton's um, method for keeping rock salt on the road so that it works longer, lasts longer, actually pre-treats the next storm uh, with the use of uh, molasses that's been infused with magnesium. It comes in that way. <clears throat> I wasn't sure how this all worked, so I found the, the television stories interesting. Um, but if you've seen that on television, uh, it's, it's an innovative way. It is being used in a number of places. I heard on one channel tonight that some places use a product from potatoes. Somebody uses beet juice. I've heard beet juice. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, that's got to be a mess, that purple stuff. All over but the anyhow, um, I just want to uh, thank the uh, highway department for the great job they've done. Uh, I think most people in town will agree that 
You, if you could drive with your eyes closed, you would know when you left Dighton and you would know when you returned to Dighton uh, because of the condition of the road. So, um, Mr. Ferry, if you're watching or see this later on, uh, I just want to say thanks for a great job. I know you don't like publicity. <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, he's just a quiet person that does his job well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and again, thanks to Mr. Hazel for filling in. But um, uh, I commend you for the work on the roads. Uh, since January, we've had a number of storms. And it was in January that, that uh, the highway department started using the magnesium and molasses mixture to spray on the rock salt so and that it uh, and it, so that it doesn't um, clump up, doesn't clog the, the spreaders, and it also reduces the amount of sand that we use, because all that sand that gets put on the road has to be accounted for as part of our stormwater plan. And if he indicates he's put down X number of tons, then he's got to let the uh, state DEP know how much of that sand he picked up, how much of it came out of the catch basins, and where do we think the rest of it went? So um, this will reduce the amount of, of sand that, that the town has to deal with. And I'm sure a lot of you know that when s intersections get sandy, or you have a strong rain and runoff, you get sand that builds up. And if you're coming to an intersection, you slide on it. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's good for ice, but it's not good if it's on a dry road and you're coming to an intersection, because when you put your brakes on it, you don't have to be going fast. The car will slide because of the sand underneath the tires. So uh, great job, Highway Department, and hope you're feeling better, Tom. I must say, I did ask Tom after his first Channel 10 interview if I could have an autograph, <laughs> and he left the building. <laughs> but on a, on a more serious note, uh, my hat's off to all members of the highway department. Again, tremendous job. They're out there battling, battling to keep ahead of it, and uh, the proof is in the pudding. Not molasses, but the proof is in the pudding. Um, you don't have to have any kind of education to see the condition of the roads throughout the entire town of Dayton. Tremendous job. They were clear. They were down to, to, to the black tire in no time. No and, ice. Right. It wasn't and, even slippery. No. And uh, I can't say enough. A terrific job by all members of the highway department. Thank you. And Mr. Ferry, if you're watching, I did not realize you were a chemist. Uh, I dabbled in chemistry, so we'll have to have a, a, a long chat when you're feeling up to it. <laughs> I hope you feel better. Mr. Ferry was feeling under the weather, and he said that he was uh, going to be enjoying some hot soup. So, Tom, I hope it's Portuguese penicillin, also <laughs> known as kale soup. We got some if you don't, right at our house. So if you're, if you're in need, I can just swing by. <laughs> Well, with all that said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I second that. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Unanimous decision. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight. Hope you learned something about molasses and sand. <laughs> uh, Cable, thank you, as always.